Well, kiddies, I'm afraid our designer hanger offer has expired. Would somebody please get Mr. De La Renta out of here? Next up on the Home Chopping Network, it's time for the Crypt Keeper's Fashion Boutique. Today we're featuring my full line of Apre V death care products. We've got everything from face scream to mascara. Try some. It's the best thing you can do for demise. <laughs> or maybe I could interest you in tonight's special. It's a tasteless tidbit about a traveling cemetery plot salesman who's about to make a grave mistake. I call it death of some salesman. Good old Judd, just another satisfied ghostomer. <laughs> I guess it's true what they say. The family that slays together stays together. <laughs> we come now to one of my favorite items. The amazing Crypt Keeper slash -omatic. It's more than just a knife. It peels, it cuts, makes fabulous french fries. It slices, it dices, it... Ooh. You've got to help me, Dr. Viscous. It's our son's eating habits. You said you were cannibals, right? Yes, that's why this vegetarianism thing scares me. No need to worry. For one thing, vegetarians are probably much better for him. I like to stalk one myself from time to time. <laughs> My advice is to let him fiend himself. The little nipper will never learn to maggot on his own if you're too busy protecting him. Our next caller, Leo, thinks his wife is cheating on him. Let's hope for her sake he doesn't catch her in the hacked. I call this sickening psychodrama as ye so. Talk about a pain in the apps. That's love for you. Eerie today, gaunt tomorrow. <laughs> As for me, kiddies, my shift's up. It's the top of the hour. Time for your favorite morning man. <laughs> What's the matter? You've never seen a shock jock before? Islands will do fine. Greetings, fashion fiends. So glad you could join me. Bet you didn't know your pal the Crypt Keeper dabbled in photography. I just love winding a few rolls of Codagrone into my camera, turning on the old fright meter and snapping off a few head shots. <laughs> Tonight's putrid picture is sure to increase your shudder speed. It's about a photographer who's losing his touch and would do almost anything to get it back. Did I say almost? I call this sickening snapshot Forever Ambergris. Now that's what I call romance. Boy gets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl and goes to pieces over her. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, kiddies, that things turned out pretty well for Bobby. She got herself a job and started modeling for Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Turn your head a little more toward me. Just a little more. Little more. Ah, perfect. <laughs> hmm. Frankly, your hacks rays look terrible. You've got to pay closer attention to your oral digene or you'll end up looking like me. I want you to brush after every meal, floss and gargoyle twice a day. Hmm, yes, looks like I'll have to drill. This won't hurt me a bit. 
In the meantime, to take your mind off the pain, I've got a little dose of Fritrous Oxide for you. It's about a sideshow mind reader who's lost his head over a pretty girl. I call it Food for Thought. <laughs> Yummy. I sure hope Nabonga ate it all. You know what they say, kiddies. A mind's a terrible thing to waste. Maybe she saved some for breakfast and had it in a brain muffin. <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to have to come out. Oh, yes, it does. Now put your head back. Open wider. Wider. <laughs> Got it! They don't call me the Tooth Scary for nothing. <laughs> Chop him to the left! Chop him to the right! Chop him every chance you get! Fright, fright, fright! All right, creeps, it's fourth and ghoul. They're probably expecting us to run a ghost pattern, so let's run a scream pass instead! <laughs> Of course, I could pull out a few other surprises from my playbook, like tonight's tale. It's about a couple of brothers who are planning a little high scaring of their own. In a nasty bit of offense, I call people who live in brass hearses. Shame about Billy and Virgil, but you know what they say, kiddies. Two deads are better than one. <laughs> And as for Bird, he stayed in the ice cream business and did very well. Everyone loves Ben and Scaries. <laughs> well, I gotta get back to my practice. Next week we're playing the Washington Dreadskins. 45, 22, 33, hot, hot, hot! You idiot! I didn't call for a handoff. <laughs> I tell you, ladies and germs, that ghoul friend of mine makes me so crazy. She told me she thought she'd look good in something long and flowing. So I threw her in the Mississippi. Mm. And how about that Ernest Hemingway, always shooting his mouth off? Ooh. Hello? Anybody? I know you're out there, folks. I can hear you bleeding. Is this on? Hmm. I know what this crowd wants. A little slay on words. Maybe a couple of nasty fright gags? Something along the lines of tonight's nasty nugget. It's a little tale about marriage. Or if you prefer, about wife and death. I call it two for the show. That Barney's my kind of guy. He comes up with a plan, but it's Andy who has to hatch it. <laughs> I guess it's true what they say. Better dead than wed. Hmm. Time for my finish. Now that's what I call bombing! Take my life, please! <laughs> Freight Court is now in session. Will the defendant please approach the bench? You stand accused of watching too much tales from the crypt. Do you understand the charge? Neither do I. But I'll tell you this. If convicted, you'll receive a stiff sentence. You may even do a little horrid time. How do you bleed? All right, then. Let the trial begin. Our first piece of evidence is a tale about a couple of college boys who are about to undergo a little trial in terror of their own. In a writ of habeas corpses, I call. House 
of horror. Poor Les. I know they say that college costs an arm and a leg, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Still, I think you'd have been happy to know he was part of one last food fright. Ah, I see we've reached a verdict. Members of the Gory, do you fiend the defendant guilty or not guilty? What do you know? A hung jury. <laughs> Killer est-il? Killer est-il? Où est la fenêtre? Bou est la fenêtre. <laughs> Bonsoir, kiddies. I was just in the middle of my French lesson. Your pal, the Crypt Keeper, has decided to see Le Monde. Imagine me, in gay scary, sitting in a nice little cafe on the rot bank. Sipping a glass of Chablis while I write ghost cards home to all my fiends. <laughs> or I could stay home and tell you tonight's tale. It concerns an ambitious young magician who wants to expand his horizons too in a tasteless trick called well cooked ham. Poor Miles. Just when he's ready to take the hat on the road, he ends up on the silver scream. Still, I think he deserves another chance to get it right. You know what they say? If at first you don't succeed, die, die again! <laughs> As for me, kiddies, I'm just about ready to go. Got my passport, my itinerary, and my ticket for the Concord. All I need now are my shots. <laughs> Ain't travel a blast? <laughs> Hello, creeps. I'll be with you in a moment. I was just in the middle of cramming for my final exams. Bet you didn't know your pal the Crypt Keeper was still in school. As a matter of fact, I'm at the top of my class at Horrorbird. <laughs> Which brings us to tonight's All Frighter. It concerns a couple of college kids who've got their own ideas about higher education. In a bit of hackademia, I call Creep Course. I guess that's a wrap for Reggie and Professor Finley. You know what they say, kiddies? Nephra, say Nephra again. <laughs> As for me, I've got to get back to my corpse catalog and decide on a major. I thought about going pre-dead, but I think I'd be better at Shriekonomics. <laughs> Good evening, creeps, and welcome aboard Tales from the Crypt Scare Lines, Flight 666, offering direct service from your living room straight to hell. <laughs> As we will be experiencing some turbulence, we recommend that you keep your seatbelts fastened and your vomit bags handy. So slip on your dead set and get ready for tonight's in fright entertainment. It's a nasty tale about my favorite kind of ghouls. Dreadheads. I call it Came the Dawn. Hmm. I know they say blondes have more fun, but you gotta admit, redheads really know how to swing. <laughs> so till next time, kiddies. I hope you'll excuse me, but I've got a little private business to take care of.
It's the only way to fry. <laughs> I've always wanted to join the Mild Die Club. <laughs> I'm carrying on, but I've really grown to love this game. I could go all night. <laughs> Which brings to mind tonight's terror tale. It's about a couple of game players who are about to find out what happens when you don't slay by the rules. I call it Oil's Well That Ends Well. Oh, shit! Looks like business is really booming for Carl and Gina. Talk about flame and fortune. <laughs> you know, kiddies, there's something about this little tale that interests me. Well, I'll be damned. I think it's this actor. Hmm. Yes, the others are good, but this one, we're talking a real bleeding man type. He's a regular Gory Cooper, a Robert Deadford, and that voice, I can swear it reminds me of someone I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how your hair is grown out. A little scream, rinse, and conditioner, and it'll look fabulous. If you don't look dead, we don't look dead. Oh, hello, kiddies. You're right on time for your appointment. <laughs> you know, it was always one of my ghouls and death to open my own scare salon. Now, let's see. A few shrieks in your hair would look good. A bouffant would look even better. Or maybe you'd like to try tonight's dye fashion statement. It's a nasty nugget that asks the question, zombie or not zombie? I call it halfway horrible. Well, at least in the end, Roger knew rot from wrong. If only he'd learned a little fester. You'll be happy to know, kiddies, that our story has a happy ending. Roger's company did very well. Its shares shot up on the New York Shock Exchange. <laughs> so, have we made up our minds? You want bangs? Perfect. I have just the thing. Welcome back, Spurts fans, to Game 7 of the World's Scaries. It's the Fright Sox versus the Boo Jays. I'm your announcer, Vin Scully. Can the Sox keep their winning shriek alive? That's the big question today. Wait a minute. Looks like there's going to be a pitching change. The Jays are bringing in their rot hander. And while they do that, we'll take another look at the defense. We have ooze on first, guts on second, and tonight's terror tale on third. It concerns a young lady who's pretty fond of diamonds herself and doesn't mind a little squeeze play to get them. I call it Till Death Do We Part. That Lucy, what a cut up! <laughs> I bet she wishes she were the one on the chopping spree. Well, kiddies, looks like I've got to work myself out of a jam. Two on, two out. The tie runs in scoring position. Spatter up! 
Yeah. What do you know? A double beheader. <laughs> 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 <laughs>